Well, welcome to Delhi Victory again. I'm Pastor Joanne Wooten. And actually what we're going to do, we're going to continue where we left off yesterday. And we're talking about worship and um, recounting John, uh, the Apostle John, who wrote the book of Revelation, um, how it is worshiping God in heaven. And so we were at Revelation chapter one, and we had already read, um, I believe, verse one. So we're going to continue with verse two. And it says, and instantly, this is John saying, I was in the spirit and I saw a throne in heaven and someone sitting on it. So four times in the book of Revelation, John says he was in the spirit. He says it's in chapter one, verse 10. He says it in chapter four, verse two. He says it in chapter 17, verse three. And he says it in uh, chapter 21, verse 10. This expression means that the Holy Spirit was giving him a vision, showing him situation and events he could not have seen with near human insight. All true prophecy comes from God through the Holy Spirit, as we see in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 20 21. And we may have shared that, but we'll go over it again. And it says, above all, you must realize that no prophecy in Scripture ever came from the prophet's own understanding or from human initiative. No, those prophets were moved on. They were influenced by. They were breathed on by the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God. So these prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit. They spoke from God means that scripture did not come from the creative work of the prophet's own invention or interpretation. God inspired the writers so that their message would be authentic and reliable. God used their talents, the education and cultural background of each writer. They were not like robots. And God cooperated with the writers in such a way as to ensure that the message he intended was faithfully communicated in the very words they wrote. Now, verse 3, the one sitting on the throne, John says, was as brilliant as gemstones, like jasper and carnelian. And the glow of an emerald circled his throne, meaning God's throne, like a rainbow. Verse 4 says, 24 thrones surrounded him, and 24 elders sat on them. They were all clothed in white and had gold crowns on their heads. Who are these 24 elders? Because there were 12 tribes of Israel in the Old Testament and 12 apostles in the New Testament, the 24 elders in this vision probably represent all the redeemed of God for all time, both before and after Christ's death and resurrection. They symbolize all those, both Jews and Gentiles, who are now part of God's family. The 24 elders show us that all the redeemed of the Lord are worshiping him, worshiping God. We're talking about worshiping God. Verse 5, from the throne came flashes of lightning and the rumble of thunder. And in front of the throne were seven torches with burning flames. What is this? This is the sevenfold spirit of God. So what is the sevenfold spirit of God? It's another name for the Holy Spirit. We see also in Zechariah 4, uh, chapter 4, verses 2 to 6, where seven lamps, like seven torches, are equated with the one spirit. And you know what? I'm just going to go right there right quick. And we're going to look at Zechariah. I say, let's just go ahead and read Zechariah as soon as I find Zechariah. Zechariah, where are you? Where are you? Chapter 4 and verses 2 to 6. Let's see what it's saying. Let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see. It's talking about a lampstand and two olive trees. Then the angel who had been talking with me returned and woke me as though I had been asleep. What do you see now? He's asking Zechariah. I answered, I see a solid gold lampstand with a bowl of oil on top of it. Around the bowl are seven lamps, each having seven spouts with wicks. And I see two olive trees, one on each side of the bowl. Then I asked the angel, what are these, my Lord? What do they mean? 
Don't you know? The angel said. No, my Lord, I replied. Then he said to me, this is what the Lord says to Zerubbabel. It is not by force nor by strength, but by my spear, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Nothing, not even a mighty mountain, will stand in Zerubbabel's, Zerubbabel's way. It will become a level plain before him. And when Zerubbabel sets the final stone on the temple in place, the people will shout, may God bless it. May God bless it. So, on to verse 6. In front of the throne was a shiny sea of glass, sparkling like crystal. In the center and around the throne were four living beings, each covered with eyes, front and back. Verse 7. The first of these living beings was a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a human face, and the fourth was like an eagle in flight. Hmm. What does that mean? Just as the Holy Spirit is seen symbolically in the seven lighted lamps, so the four living beings represent the attributes, meaning the qualities and character of God. These creatures were not real animals, like the cherubim, which is the highest order of angels, of the angels, they guard God's throne. They lead others into worship and they proclaim God's holiness. Mm. God's attributes symbolized in the animal-like appearance of these four creatures are majesty and power, that's the lion. Faithfulness is the ox intelligence, the human, and sovereignty, the eagle. I'm going to stop there. And once again, we're going to pick up on the next lesson. In the meantime, worship the king. Hallelujah. So this is what I want you to do. Donate on our website, Victory Experience. Dot com, or you can text donate to 302-324-5400. And then you can join us on the call after the broadcast. In the United States, the number is 302-561-6767. If you're in Canada, the number is 709-500-6767. And then also please share all of this on all your social media platforms. Listen, have a blessed day and worship the King.